Bullshit. He watches his mother shoot his father three times in the back. Impact. Point nine five. Everyone hates the company. <laughs> all the workers. There you go. That's the review. All the fans. <laughs> Does anyone not hate TNA? Uh, Seriously. The wrestlers now all hate it. The fans, as we noted, have hated there it. There appear to be 20,000 people that love TNA. And every other man on earth despises it. Sting came out. Angle was in the ring waiting for him with a chair. They got in a brawl. Security came out. They immediately cut backstage to Borash, who was with Christian. He said he was going to handle the situation using psychology. So, Angle and Sting were bitching in the ring. I take copious notes on this show. <laughs> I have no idea what they were talking about. There are about. two things I remember about this this segment. One, Angle was mad at Sting because Sting hit him with a bat last week. Sting said, I was justified with hitting you with a baseball bat because you, took a, you ruined my title shot. Once again, Sting, worst Christian ever. So Christian, speaking of, came out and said, we must all get along. He said Jarrett handed Sting a title shot at the pay-per-view. Sting couldn't possibly believe he deserved it. He ended up suggesting Sting and Angle against AJ and Christian in a no-DQ tag match and said if the good guys got a pin, whichever good guy it was got a title shot at the pay-per-view, and if AJ got the pin, neither of them would get the title shot. So the other thing I remember about the segment, I hate this show. <laughs> Christian booked this match, and either Don or Tanae asked quizzically, "Can he do that?" And he just did. And the answer is yes, there Christian can. Team 3D cut a promo putting over the NWA tag titles. Said they'd have a nice long title run. They're going to put the titles on the line at the pay per view against LAX, Steiner, and Tomko. And tonight it was going to be Joe and Rhino. They actually had a, a pretty damn good little match for three minutes. Sure. Uh, Samoa Joe and Bubba Ray Dudley. Bubba can be a real asshole. Mm -hmm. He takes advantages of people and that sort of thing. He and Samoa Joe beat the shit out of each other. They went to town. They worked like two X Division, 135-pound guys. They threw each other around with Germans and uh, Exploders and all sorts of shit, and it was awesome. And they finally uh, went to get the tables, and Rhino ended up goring Daniels, who had run in. Why? I don't know. I just He just did. Rhino gored him through a table before they could hit the move. They were upset but accepted it. I guess they're all friends now. And uh, this is an odd, pointless, fun, but pointless segment. Yeah. I mean, the, the wrestling was good, but I don't understand any of the rest of it. Well, okay. <laughs> it went from two teams having a match trying to kill each other, a fifth Unrelated person runs in. Completely unrelated. Completely unrelated. Yeah. They work together to beat him up. Then Team 3D was set up for the 3D, but Rhino stole the gore. Then they were angry again. Then they were friends again. And then Daniels was on the ground smiling. Yeah. I don't know. Right? I don't know, everybody. <laughs> if anybody can explain any of this shit to me, make my day. Please help me out. So then we had a wacky meeting, AJ and Christian. AJ demanded Christian stop volunteering him for shit. Christian said, listen, if we win tonight, Steiner and Tonko aren't around, a business history, that means someone is in line for a phenomenal opportunity. AJ said, first you steal my hood, now you're giving somebody else a phenomenal gimmick. And Christian said, I'm talking about you, you dumb fuck hillbilly. And this made AJ happy. And so, there you go. This segment was awesome. All right, Christian and AJ are great together. They argued about title shots and, and hoods and chest hair. And I don't know how it works, but somehow they are great together. I demand they be in every segment of every show. If you just get it in your head that none of this matters, <laughs> that no one's going to buy these pay-per-views, they're always going to lose money, and uh, they're going to last as long as Panda keeps them employed, then this stuff's all great. Sure. If, if your whole idea is we need to make some money, 
than uh, the wacky redneck hillbilly and his uh, his uh, goofy Canadian partner, goofy Canadian friend. They're selling no pay per views. That's true. Sorry, but uh, it, but it was still great. Eric Rude came out, or Robert Rude, it doesn't matter. Called out Eric, said he was going to fire him right there tonight. I don't know what he's waiting for. Out came Cornette. He said he told Jared to stay at home because of what happened with Tracy last week. He could not condone man on woman violence. Well, why is Eric Young there then? He also beat up Tracy. In fact, <laughs> he did it first. I do not have answers for these questions. Cornette then attempted to explain this stupid fucking storyline between Rude and, and Eric Young. Basically, he said that Eric had a TNA contract, but then Robert Rude signed him, which was tampering, so he could fire Robert Rude. So, anyway, Rude ended up shoving down Cornette, and then out came Eric Young, and they beat him up at him with a guitar, and then security came out. And then Cornette ended up signing Robert Roode in the big grudge match against Jeff Jarrett. Yes. Not Eric Young. No. We're not getting Robert Roode and Eric Young. We're getting Robert Roode versus Jeff Jarrett at the pay-per-view. Indeed. Cornette did his best to make this logical. He's Jim Cornette, so he knows everything has to make sense. So bless his little southern heart. He sat down and he tried to make this make sense. Boy, he did not succeed. (laughs) Well, I mean, I can't say that because... He in the end it made more sense than the sense it made before that, that Maybe. Robert Roode could be employing Eric Young and if he fired him Eric Young could never work in wrestling again like Robert Roode owns every promotion well, in the they, world or something <laughs> stupid like that. Cornette says Young has a t- contract with TNA and then he signed a, a personal services contract with you. So Eric Young's working two jobs. Good for him. Cornette says he could fire Eric Young and Roode says great. Go ahead, that's awesome. So apparently, if anyone fires Eric Young, he's gone from TNA forever. Huh? I don't. I, I don't know. Bobby Roode wanted anybody fires Eric Young. Cornette he said he could fire Eric Young, and yeah, Roode wanted yeah, him to because T- he had a TNA contract. Okay, so TNA can TNA can fire Eric Young, and then he can't wrestle on TNA anymore. Yes, that makes perfect sense. Yes. What the fuck is Rude's co- contract for then? Vince, I've been asking that fucking question for right. three months. And that's my point, is that Cornette failed. He failed, but at least he explained the differences between the two contracts and why Eric uh, Robert Rude is not going to just fire Eric Young like he should have fucking done this week if this whole thing made sense. Fine. It's stupid. It is stupid. That's my point. It's so stupid, Jim Cornette cannot save it. He saved it somewhat. I cannot say he did not save it at all. Is it good now? No. But he didn't save it. It's better. It's better. Because before, I didn't know how... Okay, first off, let's just... Let's just pretend this company. Let's just pretend that Robert Roode can fire Eric Young. Okay? okay. Let's pretend he can. Now, right? I, I must stop you here. Do you mean fire him from this show? Whatever their storyline was. He okay. says, I'm going to okay. fire you, Eric. All right. Let's pretend he can. Okay? All right. That makes no sense. None. Now, if Robert Roode would have come out this week after Eric Young beat him up and not fired him, that would have made even less sense. Well, you've got me there. So at least Cornette explained why he didn't fire Eric Young this week. But I still don't know how Robert Roode was going to fire Eric Young from from wrestling forever. Yes. So they go through all the stupidity, and, and, and it's our weekly brain bleeding session where we try to think and, and, and it doesn't work and our cortex just snaps. And then Eric Young comes out, the crowd's going crazy. He runs in, he's running wild, he's making a great comeback, and Bobby Roode we both like and he he's bumming his ass off like, holy shit, after all this, this is going to be a good match. And then they sign Rude versus Jarrett. <laughs> yes. It's like they're trying to stab me in the eye. Yes. And speaking of, Dale Kim and Jackie Moore in a street fight. Ended when Chris Harris ran in and ripped off his eye patch. Actually, James Storm got involved. Gail won clean. Right. Drop kicked a chair into uh, uh, Jackie's face, I guess. And Jackie was up moments later, pummeling her. James Storm ran in. Chris Harris made the save. Ripped off the eye patch. He can now see. And apparently they will have a real match at the pay-per-view. The rumor was that Jackie lost two teeth in this match. If she did... I don't know where. <laughs> well, was... There was the garbage can shop, but she had no blood on her and uh, did not seem to be selling missing two teeth. 
I, 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 yes. I would be flabbergasted if a woman could be this tough. I, if a human being could be this tough. I, I Actually, yes. I, I, I yeah. apologize to the women listening. I should have said a human being. I, I was watching this. Like, there's any women listening. But well, there's now. that. There's that. But I was watching it thinking, okay, here's where the garbage can goes in her head. This is where she loses her teeth. And she took two or three shots of the facial area with a bat or whatever. And the cane came off, and I thought, wow, she's fine. And then... She picked up a, a hockey stick or a broom or so, some sort of some stick-like object, and the look in her face and body was, "I am about to kill this fucker," and then she did. Yeah. So I, I don't know if it was exaggerated or if that was not the spot yet, but frankly, regardless, she's a lot tougher than I am. She is, in fact, um, much tougher. All right, where were we? So then we had AJ and Christian versus Angle and Sting with Cornette doing commentary. Six minutes, four of which were commercial. <laughs> so uh, it had a fine little three-minute TV match, and it was no DQ, so there was a chair shot, which I just now figured out when I was remembering it was no DQ. Anyway, the finish was just basically Angle and Sting, both putting AJ in the ankle lock for the submission. Cornette jumped up, asked the ref, which guy AJ tapped to? Yes. <laughs> my left hurt, foot hurts way more than my right. I also like AJ. He was sort of tap with both hands. Like, if he only tap with his right hand, maybe that would mean only his right leg hurt. Sure, yeah. Or or they'd only let go of the right leg. So anyway, that was dumb. So now they're doing a three-way. They now say three-way at the pay-per-view. Who cares? Three-way at the pay-per-view, everybody. Angle? No. A- yes, yes. yes. A- Angle, Sting, and, and uh, Christian. Christian, yes. And AJ's left out in the... Oh, AJ will be facing Samoa Joe. Why? Because it'll be a good match. <laughs> Fine. That's, that's the whole reason. Holy goodness gracious. So yeah, Impact sucks, everybody. Don't watch it. Yes, I command the .95 of you watching to stop. How's it going, everybody? We're here for the post-TNA Sacrifice pay-per-view report here at figure4online.com. Brian and Vinny. Hey, y'all. And it is a special day today on, uh, I guess, what is it, May 13th. I don't know if everybody's aware, but today is Pikachu Day. Awesome. That's right. We made sure to arrange for Gabe Sapolsky to have a full hour on Wrestling Observer Live just for Pikachu. Wow. And, in addition to that... Not only are we going to review the Sacrifice pay-per-view, but we're also going to review Impact just for Pikachu. That's amazing. I'm hoping that he can pull himself away from cybersex long enough to actually listen to this update because we learned a lot about young Pikachu tonight and what he does in his spare time. Wow, hopefully not while listening to Observer Live. Dating Sims. (laughs) Seriously. All right, then. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I hope that he's got some time to listen to this, because we're doing this just for him. I hope he can pull himself away from himself for an hour or so. Sure, and, yeah. Uh, and, and just give us his time. Well, you know, things are crazy. Things are crazy when you've got lots of stuff to do on the Internet <laughs> on a Sunday night. So let's get into the impact review for today. want to make sure that we cover this before we get into the, smack the, or the sacrifice pay-per-view, because God knows... TNA Impact was just a packed show. It was full of excitement. Stuff we could not miss. You're in quite a mood. We could not miss this for the world. Are you doing cocaine? No, absolutely not. You're full of joy. I've been on the board. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's been crazy the last couple of days. Let me read here what old Pikachu does for fun. All right. This is actually asked by Alan Farrell. What do you do for fun, Pikachu? You know, off the internet. Play any sports or anything? Wait, this is on the board? Yeah. What was the what was the thread title? What a loaded question that is. His answer was, and I quote, Play dating sims. I'm going through the saber route in fate slash stay night right now, and I've got all the alternate routes in Tsukihimi to go through, or something of that nature. I'm so happy I don't know what any of this means. Sure. Please enlighten us to the source of all this business ROH, Joshi, Games, FSN, Dragon Quest, God of War, Books, Comics, Hustle, MIRC, Anime, and Wade Keller. What more is there in this world? Trumped us. Yeah, I didn't do any of that stuff today. 
Now let's get into TNA because I want to make sure that we cover this whole show. Because this TNA Impact, let me tell you everybody, when this show was over, the excitement that I had for the Sacrifice pay-per-view, I just couldn't wait. It was crazy. This was a show that my DVR rejected. It recorded the first five minutes and then immediately skipped ahead to the final five minutes. And being the hard-working young man that I am, I went out of my way to record this goddamn show again, and thank God it recorded. The whole thing! And never was there a shadow of a doubt that you would record it. Never. Uh, I, being the knave of the show, the naughty one, I tried to convince you, let's just skip the show, and you would have none of it. None of it. You insisted, we are going to watch Impact. I'm not a fat, lazy bastard like you. That's right. I watch all this stuff and, and work hard. This was Homicide versus Devon versus Scott Steiner. It was one half of the three-way tag match that we were going to have at the pay-per-view. Hector Guerrero was shown in the front row watching. And by the way, there's a new mascot on TNA who I thought for sure was going to be Hector Guerrero in a uh, costume, but sadly it was not. We'll get into the mascot later on. Anyway... They announced at the beginning of the match that AJ and Samoa Joe were going to be wrestling in the pay-per-view. That was the big angle. And when they announced it as being in the match, they mean we mean the guys were wrestling in the ring, and Mike Tanae said, oh, by the way, AJ enjoyed the pay-per-view. Okay. Now, granted, I've said many times that really what you need is a main event that, that sells pay-per-views. Nobody's going to buy a show for the undercard. Not every undercard program needs to have some sort of wacky angle. With that said... If you're going to waste your time doing a wacky angle with Sanjay Dutt and Chris Sabin and Black Machismo, and you're going to waste your time doing a wacky angle with God knows who else was on this pay-per-view. I've already forgotten most of the card. You could at least have Samoa Joe say, AJ, I challenge you to a match. And AJ say, yes, Joe, I accept your challenge. See you Sunday. They did none of that. Nope. And I wouldn't even really mention this if not for the fact that Joe versus AJ ended up being the semi-main event on the pay-per-view. <laughs> the semi-main event on the pay-per-view yes. was thrown together on impact by an announcer. Anyway, so they had a uh, match, and it was it was pretty good. Machete took the rep. Hernandez gave Diva on the border toss, got the pin, which pretty much ensured that LAX was not actually going to be winning the pay-per-view match. This was great. <laughs> this was a great segment that made us want to see the pay-per-view badly. God damn, that was awesome. I Yeah, that was just fine. So then they plugged the pay-per-view. Steiner was screaming at Borash backstage. and We always endorsed that. He said it sucked to be surrounded by a bunch of idiots who he hated. He said when he was a champion, he had all sorts of people watching his back, like his freaks. <laughs> well, if you can't trust your freaks, Brian, who can you if trust? If you can't trust Medeja to watch your back, <laughs> who the fuck can you trust in this business? So, anyway, he was freaking out, and up walked Christy Hemi, and uh, she said that the first two teams she had brought to TNA were not her boys. This was her real team. Did I miss a team somewhere? Well, there was the Heartbreakers, yeah, and there was, I'm sure, another not team another team in there somewhere. Well, whoever they were, team number no, two, no, Serotonin. It was on the the uh, it was on the free show. Oh, that's right, the the legendary pregame show. Yeah. So anyway, up walked uh, VKM, and they ogled her, and she said she did not need to talk to him right now. She was going down to address this situation to the world. And what's funny about Christy Hemi is she's fighting for women's rights and all this other bullshit. And meanwhile, she comes out dressed as the cheapest hooker. Just the cheapest hooker. And she got in the ring, and she announced... <clears throat> actually, she was about to make an announcement when VKM, I guess, came down to continue ogling her large, bulbous breasts, and suddenly outran two men. And they started beating up on VKM. And Tanae goes, they're not under contract at TNA. And Don West said, we know who these guys are. And Tanae said... Looks like we know who the mystery team is, and granted, I knew who they were, mm -hmm. but uh, how the fuck were 1.2 million other people supposed to know? They didn't bother mentioning their name as the announcers were talking about how we all know who these people are. So finally, Christy says, here we have Basham and the Damager. Now, <laughs> we'll start with the name. For those of you who never watched OBW and you hear this guy who called himself Damager, and you say, why does he call, it, call himself Damager? Why does he spell it with an A-J-A -A at the end? Now you know, because Damager sounds horrible. I actually cringed and squealed when she said it. <laughs> Damager. 
That's number one. Number two, as you note, they came out, they were not identified. TNA has this theory that everyone who was in WWE was, in fact, a big star. God bless these men. When they were in WWE, they were not big stars, and the instant they were gone, they were immediately forgotten. Now, Doug Basham came out. He, he's got the same haircut. He's got wrestling tights on. They say bash him on the side. So if you're really paying attention, you may have figured out who this was. Actually, I think that back. He had ties in the pay-per-view. And in, in this angle, I think he was wearing jeans. So he just looked like a large, large, bland, bald man. Sure. Damage, I've been watching this guy for years, since like 2001. I have never seen him with hair. I have never seen him with facial hair. So he came out in his wacky street clothes with hair and facial hair. And if, they, if I did not know who this was beforehand, I would have had no clue who this human being was. So there's this strange guy who I knew was Damage, but... There's no chance that anyone at home would have picked this guy out of a crowd. He, there's just two random men, one significantly more random than the other. But we all know who this mystery team was. So then uh, Lance Hoyt came out to make the save, and I guess we were supposed to care. Bob Backlund was going nuts backstage, screaming about a book of his that was stolen, and they immediately cut away. Again, somehow we were supposed to care. They didn't even want to see the pay-per-view, though. Oh, yeah, sure. So uh, they, they talked about this later. Apparently he has a book that was stolen. And they, they mentioned that Saban, Chris Saban jumped out of a tree and stole his book, and I swear to Christ, I'm not making this up. Well, apparently it was an angle that we fast-forwarded through a few weeks back, which saddens okay. me greatly. But <laughs> it does, but listen, I, I guarantee you it was 15 seconds long, Yeah. and it, we do not recognize, as we were fast-forwarding, any, any of these personalities because it was so quick and blurry. They never talked about it again. They never showed it again. No. This is not our fault. No. Then up walked Kevin Nash, Sanjay Dutt, Black Machismo. They all cut this a promo. So awesome. And uh, that basically, Sanjay said, I'm sorry, uh, Black Machismo said something, then Nash said something, and then Sanjay Dutt turns to Borash and said, so let me guess, no time for Sanjay Dutt, right? And Borash said, yeah, we don't have any time. Guys, back to you. And they cut away. And, and Sanjay nodded and walked away. <laughs> <laughs> we are not exaggerating. This actually happened on TNA. It ruled. It was great. Black Machismo and Sanjay Dutt versus Shelly and Saban, who are a fine team. They had about as good a match as you can have in three minutes. Sanjay made a big comeback, broke down into a four-way. Ref got distracted, and uh, basically, like I said, there was a skit involving X Division goofballs, Bob Backlund, and a tree. Backlund ran in afterwards after uh, Sanjay, I guess, got pinned or something happened. I don't know. Who no cares? It doesn't matter. But anyway, again, this was supposed to sell pay-per-views, and, you know, it didn't. But it made us want to see it, though. Yeah, me, for sure. Yeah. They did a three-way debate with Christian Angle and Sting, which was the stupidest thing I've ever seen. J.B. Jeremy Borash here backstage with a very important interview with all three of the combatants in this Sunday night sacrifice pay-per-view main event for the World Heavyweight Championship. Introducing, first of all, the instant classic, the World Heavyweight Champion, Christian Cage. Secondly, the man who won this opportunity at the lethal lockdown match, the icon, Sting. And third, the Olympic gold medalist, Kurt Angle. Sting, I want to start with you. A lot of people feel, including Kurt Angle, that Jeff Jarrett handed you this opportunity on a silver platter at the lethal lockdown match. You know what? The whole world was surprised. I was surprised, too. You can call it Jeff Jarrett handed it to me. You know what? Kurt Angle would have taken the same gift. You know what? As a matter of fact, what am I talking about? He did take the same gift because last week I oh, gave you a sorry. gift like that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That was a completely different scenario, Sting. You had that. You did that because Jeff Jarrett did it. You didn't do it because you wanted to do it. Actually, Sting, Stinger, you haven't done anything to qualify. Actually, Stinger, I, I, I tend to, uh, it pains me to have to do this, but I tend to side with Kurt Angle on this one. I mean, the Olympic gold medalist, or as, or as you like to call him, the Olympic gym teacher. But, um, you know, Shut up, uh, Christian. Why don't you, you know, just zip your mouth up? Let me tell you, Kurt, what I did to qualify. I qualified not once, but two times. And if you want, I'll qualify How a third. You, oh, you want to qualify? You want to, you're, you're asking me to go for another match? You want a match with me? I'll if be that's what it takes, Sting. I'll tell you what, you didn't do anything to qualify. What would you do? You hit me in the gut with a bat. Does that qualify you? That's you know what? Really Back nice. up the tape a little bit, Kurt. If you wouldn't get involved in other people's businesses, for example, a world title match, you cost me the world title. Actually, Whoa, hey, Kurt, actually, Kurt who's I, mean, the person? I, I, I think I have have to decide with the face man on this one with Sting. I mean, you did kind of, I mean, let's not get crazy, Sting. I mean, you had a minuscule chance of winning the world title, but it wasn't really going to happen. But, but, Kurt, you did get him disqualified. I mean, I, I mean, that's not real cool, man. I don't know why you did that. I mean, Shut up, I Christian. 
Sting, you haven't done anything to qualify for this match. I should be in the match against Christian. It should just be me versus Christian. Hey, you shouldn't even be in this Kurt, match. You Kurt, want to insult me actually, by calling me a gym teacher? Match, you want to do things like that? Hey, Sting, thing. that doesn't call for anything. Hey, Kurt, if you got a problem with the way I got my shot at the world title, then why don't you do something about it? All right, I'll do something about it, Sting. Tonight I'm coming after you, Sting, and I'm going to find you. And when I do, I'm not coming to shake your hand. Sting, are you just going to let him talk to you like anywhere, that? Kurt. I'm hey, not hiding anywhere. Are you just going to let him talk Come get me. Go get him, Kurt. Go get him. You have a go-home show for the pay-per-view. This is the main event. You're supposed to do something that makes us want to see this match. And what they do is they have these three guys all on the screen at the same time, all yelling at the same time about bullshit. And when it's over, all you think is, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you. I do not want to see any of you wrestle each other. I absolutely don't want to pay twenty nine ninety five to see any of you guys wrestle each other. Therefore, why the fuck would I want to buy this pay-per-view? I, I don't even understand. I mean, this should never have aired on TV. I, I don't know. There, there was that. There's the fact that Chris Daniels was bothering Sting in the corner and had to be sent away like a twerp. <laughs> like a, he, was, he was doing a run-in in a promo. That's always good. That, and, and, and as annoying as it was, even worse is the fact that this turned the feud into Kurt Angle versus Sting, guest starring the world champion. Yes. 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 This gets a massive thumbs down. Yeah, and then uh, I think we had the main event after that, which was Samoa Joe, Chris Harrison, Rhino versus James Storm, AJ, and Daniels. They had 12 minutes of TV time, and of course the main event has to be something not related to the main event. And they also had a commercial break, so... Broke down into a six-way. Everyone hit a hard lariat. And then Jackie tossed a beer bottle into the ring for Storm. Harris grabbed it. As the ref was trying to get it away from him, Storm rolled him up and pinned him using the tights. Good finish. Good match. Yeah, good finish. Good match. This was all fine. And then, of course, there was more. Angle and Sting brawled down to the ring. The rest of the guys just sort of vanished. A hundred geeks broke it up. And Christian stood on the ramp, grinning at all the trouble he'd caused. And I thought... Why would I want to see this pay-per-view? I see you dropped the charade now. Why would I want to see this pay-per-view? Seriously. It really hit me when watching the main event. There's a main event for the world title, the NWA title. And I, I presume Christian's a champion. I'm not entirely sure. And and Sting, I guess, is trying to win it back. And, and Angle, I guess, has never had it, I don't think. Did he win it when he first recall. came in? I don't think he did. I can't even remember. I uh, And I watched it and I thought, I don't care who wins. Oh, no. I could not I give two fucks about who wins this match. <laughs> I don't give a shit about any of them. None of them. No. That is an utter failure of promotion. <laughs> now, listen. Everybody who's sick of hearing about De La Hoya and MMA and pro wrestling, shut the thing off now. Because i got another big rant here for you. I watched a 30-minute hype special for a De La Hoya Mayweather fight. I don't walk, I'll watch boxing. I've never watched boxing except for a few Mike Tyson fights. I don't give a fuck about boxing. I watched a half-hour show, and it convinced me to pay fifty four ninety five for a boxing match. That's effective. Seber on the website, the Mr. Uh, Pro TNA, is ranting and raving about how it's not the same thing. And don't forget, TNA can't get clearance for a show like this. Well, guess what? They did, Saturday night. Did you know that? They had a half-hour hype special on Saturday night. They had basically they had exactly the same amount of time that HBO had for 24/7 De La Hoya Mayweather. They had the exact same amount of time that UFC has for UFC All Access. 30 minutes, a 30 minute hype special for the pay per view. Did you know this pay per this show was taking place? Why no? I didn't know this show was taking place. It certainly wasn't plugged on the on the uh, TNA Impact show. How the fuck were we supposed to know? I don't know. Okay, well let's just say that we were flipping through the channels and we tuned into this 30 second hype show for the pay-per-view you think well you know maybe they'd have some uh maybe they'd have some sort of a build for the main event maybe they'd have some sort of um some recaps maybe a recap or interview all the guys or or show them training or something like that i'm sure you can figure out something in 30 minutes to build up this main event got an email here from uh from somebody that watched it my kill here he writes don't know if you want to mention on the show but i actually watched road sacrifice the 30-minute hype special that TNA got on Spike TV on Saturday night the day before the pay-per-view. It was nothing but hype videos, but there was also something else that was really interesting. 
They aired a whole segment, about eight minutes, of the Full Metal Mayhem match from last year's Sacrifice with Christian and Abyss. I guess that really shows how lame they've built up this year's show when they show a match on the preview show that has to do with a year-old feud, including a wrestler that's not even on the show. They couldn't air anything to do with, say, Joe and AJ or whatever. They show that. Real odd. <laughs> you Real don't odd. say. Eight minutes. Eight minutes. That's more than 25% of a 30-minute show. 25% of a 30-minute show was showing a match from last year. In fact, if you take a commercials, it's probably a third of the show. Yeah. Hold well on. TNA, everybody. Fantastic. There's your 30-minute hype special. There's your there's your TNA All Access. There's your TNA 24-7. They had the same amount of time, and that's what they delivered. That's their idea of how to build up a pay-per-view. 20,000 buys, maybe. No. And it's sad because this was a hell of a pay-per-view. This may have been the best TNA pay-per-view literally in years. It was the best in a long time. Halfway through, this is one of the, maybe one of the best shows ever. Kind of fell off a cliff for a bit. But, yes, this was a, an automatic easy thumbs-up show. But nobody bought it. <laughs> no one saw it except you and me. Because the TNA TV shows are such utter shit. And their half-hour hype special is not only a mystery, <laughs> it's hidden, but it's like a, a comedy show. It's like, okay, what sells pay-per-views in 2007? Let's do the exact opposite and see what happens. Let's not promote it, and let's not actually promote the pay-per-view outside of some wacky video packages. And we'll show a match from last year. Featuring a guy... A completely who's random, unrelated match from last year. Not in the company right now, and is not going to appear on the pay-per-view the next day. And a gimmick match that is not going to be on the pay-per-view the next and day. And a gimmick match that's not going to be on the pay-per-view the next day. This is TNA. We are wrestling. At least they were wrestling on the pay-per-view. But again, you'd never know that from watching TV. Watching TV, TNA is not wrestling. TNA is shitty skits, stupid interviews. Very short matches. Very short matches. They still have commercials. Yeah, and uh, just random bullshit. But the pay-per-view was goddamn great. Chris Saban, Sanjay Dutton, Jay Lethal for the X Division title. This was a great opener, probably three and a half stars. I guess the big moment here was when Stomper came out. <laughs> now, I must ask you, because you didn't react to this nearly like I did. Were you aware? I was well aware of Stomper. Now, were you aware before today? No, I, okay. well, I was aware before the pay per view. But, but that's only because you were you did observe live and Dave mentioned it, I assume. No, I actually got word from TNA at about four forty. What they send you an email? I got a text message. <laughs> well, turn it, tune in to sacrifice for Stomper. I did in fact scoop Dave. <laughs> he was unaware of Stomper. <laughs> well, there's a first. Yeah, I got a text message. There's a new mascot named Stomper. It is a man in a kangaroo suit. <laughs> So, I did not get this text message. I am not on TNA's contact list. So I watched this match. It's a hell of a match. They're flying all over the place and killing each other. And suddenly a giant rat appears on the screen. <laughs> and I screamed. <laughs> no, 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 no. I was not ready for this, this rodent image. <laughs> and I said, what the hell was that? And you said it's the new mascot. That's Stomper. <laughs> you said it's Stomper. Actually, initially it said Thumper, because I forgot who it was. <laughs> Whatever. And I said, I, 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 it's, it's a big guy in a cartoony rat costume, so I said, their mascot is a rat? <laughs> and you said, no, it's a kangaroo. Duh. Stomper. <laughs> it gets better. So Stomper <laughs> comes out, and Mike Sinead is explaining that this is the new mascot, Stomper. And by the way, this is classic DNA uh, production values. They could have done this before the match or afterwards. This happened just during the match. In the middle of a high spot. In the middle of a high spot. Sure. So Don just gets strangely quiet. <laughs> I think he was disturbed. And then all he didn't of, trust Stomper. And then all of a sudden he, he says, and I quote, it caught me off guard there for a second. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, Don West is going to have nightmares about Stomper for weeks now. He is going to wake up in the middle of the night, and Stomper is going to be in his closet. <laughs> Under a bed. Stomper is going to be behind the shower curtain. Yes. Stomper is going to be everywhere, waiting for Don West. That would be terrifying. It caught me off guard there for a second. <laughs> and he muttered this. He did. He, 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 was, he was... You know, you've all heard Don West. He's a loud, boisterous man. For God's sake, that's why he's on TV. <laughs> and he and and he was, he was screaming about how great the action in the ring was, and the rat appeared on screen, and... He got quiet. Don West just stopped. Like, and Mike Tanay explained, that's Stumper. That's our new mascot. And Don West said, 
They caught me off guard for a second there. <laughs> anyway, more It'll never than, be the same. More than just the match, I knew it would fail when you tried to explain it, so I tried to cover for you. More than just the match, this match actually had a storyline that wasn't your typical stupid bullshit TNA storyline. The storyline is that Sanjay Dutt is, according to TNA, the best athlete never to hold the X Division title. And the story here was he had chance after chance after chance. It was broken up at the last second, this and that. And Saban finally cradled him and grabbed the tights and fucked him. Not literally, but you know what I mean? Not humble him. Got the pin, and and Sanjay, you know, he didn't get it. And it's just it's a very simple storyline. He wants the goddamn belt. He's the only guy that's never had the belt, which actually should tell you something about the belt, but regardless... He wants that goddamn belt, and people keep screwing him out of it. And it's such an easy story, and it's a story that people can get into. Mm -hmm. This was great. This was great. The the only bad thing I can say about this match is they started to do way too many near falls for the opener. Now, that's good for this match. It can it can kind of hurt the rest of the show. Nonsense. I can't take that as a uh, criticism because that's how TNA has done business for five years. (laughs) That's a valid point. If they hadn't done it, everyone else on the whole goddamn card would have, so why not? As we would see. Lethal and Dutt brawled afterwards. Grandpa Nash came out and broke it up. And he has a beautiful silver mullet. This was like, I was once, there's, my brother-in-law, Nails, everybody's well aware of, has two sons, Cliff and Carlos, three and five. Carlos is almost four. Cliff actually might be six. Anyway, they're youngsters. And, you know, when you you play around with kids and, and maybe you take some candy from them or something, <laughs> You just act like an asshole uncle. You know what I mean? Actually, no. Well, you sh- uh, are you trying to discipline them? No, I was just I was just playing around with them. You know, you know how you 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 wrestle around with kids and okay, whatnot. Sure. Yes. One day, Carlos just punched me right in the face. <laughs> Carlos. Yeah, we're just playing around. He's three years old, and and he's always like, "Let's wrestle," and I try to teach him the crab and such like that. And anyway, he all of a sudden just punched me right in the face, and. uh I was just going to pummel that little guy, but luckily he was three. But anyway, the point is, sometimes kids will just do that. You're trying to separate them. Maybe they got in a fight, and you're, you're, you're pulling them apart. Or they're both fighting over a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, and you pull them apart. And one of them just gets so mad that he, like, kicks you. Mm-hmm. This is what Sanjay Dutt did to Kevin Nash. <laughs> yeah. Like a fucking three-year-old infant. He kicked him and ran away. <laughs> yep. And this made Kevin Nash mad. And he announced that Thursday night on Impact, he said, I'm not running after you tonight. On Thursday night on Impact, you're grounded. 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 He actually didn't say that, but... Too bad. Yeah. He, yes, he, he, that's technically the storyline, though. He's going to be grounded. He's going to be punished. And the young whippersnapper has climbed over the fence into uh, in the Grandpa Nash's yard one too many times to get at the peach tree. He's going to get a taste of the belt. And there's going to be trouble. So then we had footage of the Bashams attacking VKM as VKM were meeting with some fake marks. Damage it gave BJ a brain damage. BG. <laughs> brain damage. All these J's and B's and G's. Anyway. So BG was take B You said it right that time. Road Dog was taken to the hospital <laughs> with a super severe concussion, according to Don <laughs> that West. That was the official diagnosis. <laughs> super severe concussion. Robert Root and Jeff Jarrett, apparently Jarrett's wife was having issues, so he needed to fly home very early on in the pay-per-view. And obviously this match was scheduled to go on in the semi-main because they did, like, a main event style match with a ref bump. Let's see, now what do they have here? Let's see. Jarrett made a comeback, kicked, kicked Root in the gonads. Right in the nads, Don West screen. Those were his exact words. Ref didn't care. It was right in front of him. So then Root took off a turnbuckle. Then they did a wacky spot with a referee in a chair. Then Jared hit the stroke, and Tracy put the foot on the rope. Then the ref ejected her. Then Root hit Jared with handcuffs and made the cover. The ref came back, but Jared kicked out. Then Root had a guitar. Then the ref confiscated it. And then Jared went for another figure four, and Root kicked him off. Jeff went face first into the buckle, and Root hit a fisherman suplex for the pin. Another very good match. Both matches probably in the three and a half star range, the first and second match. Uh, Rude is an awesome heel. Jared actually worked like an awesome baby face. The people were into him. And this was all thumbs up action. The, 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 these fans did love Jeff Jarrett. He's, I, I, the time off was good. He's fresh again. Everyone's totally into him. And yes, 
the match was was awesome, and I, I I liked it a lot better before you just read off that list of all the insane stuff and silly stuff that happened. I I had forgotten most of it and just sat back and watched the match. Now you read read it, it's like, God, that's a lot of garbage. Well, it was just you know it was it's their usual. It was booked to be in a position other than second on the show. Well, they weren't about that's to still not a good excuse, but it's still the way they do it. They weren't about to change the whole thing. So then we had Rude getting a guitar afterwards. Threatening to waffle Jarrett. Jarrett got it. Tracy ran back down. Stood there forever because Eric Young was slow on the draw. And he finally slid in. They put the heels in double figure fours, and everybody went crazy. And I guess we're going to get a mixed tag, and Eric Young is technically considered a girl. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. That, that, that's the way it works. Christian AJ and Steiner had another Three Stooges meeting backstage. I don't know. I, I've talked to people that are that are friends of Christian, good friends, and even they're like, this guy's just a, he's not the champ. <laughs> he's, some, he's, he's a goofball comedy figure. It's funny, we laugh, but there's a very good reason nobody gives two fucks about that TNA title. Well, they didn't before, but he's not helping. Curly of the Three Stooges is the champion. Yes, that's, and that's bad. And is Larry going to win it? Is Mo? Will Mo ever get his title shot? Who cares? And Shem's not in the building. No. Chris Daniels and Rhino work their ass off. Two and three quarter stars. I like it to throw in the fourth stooge. This is your your geek, well, uh, it, useless knowledge uh, statement of the show here. To be fair, it fit. Tomko had not yet shown up. Fine. It's still a typical geek reference. It was. It always just slows the show to a, a halt. I think it brings the show to a peak. Well, you're wrong. How dare you. Chris Daniels and Rhino had a good match. Not as good as the first two matches, just because they didn't have enough time. They worked very hard, but I think something, some time got cut here in a couple of matches. I think the next match as well. And Unfortunately, not enough was cut from the Kip Games match, but... They had a uh, pretty good match. Daniels finally hit him with the bat, got the pin. I liked it because a foreign object was used, and it led to the pin. Yes. Unlike, say, the second match, where several foreign objects were used, and none led to the pin until the very end. Yes, so. let's, let's make the uh, foreign object meaningful. He, he got his fake bat, he whacked him in the shoulder, they said he got hit in the head, and then he got pinned. Yes. Simple. Then we had Kip. Kip James actually cut perhaps the most passionate promo of his career. Yes. I don't know if I've ever seen a more passionate promo. Still didn't do much for me. Well, uh, I, it was almost like it, it, it was almost like you've never cut a good promo. Now you cut an average one. Good job, but it was still only average. Well, there's that and the fact that he, he's cutting this great promo for a match on our show that we've already paid to see anyway. Yeah. So they had this match. It was it was Chris. Wait, where am I? Kip James versus Damager. The Damager. Sorry. And Doug Basham, handicap match because BJ was still in the hospital, and Lance Hoyt's flight was delayed, they said. His flight to Orlando, even though he lives in Orlando. Crazy flight there. But they had a, a, a basic match, handicap match. Bad guys beat up on him forever. Christy cheated. Kip made a comeback. He looked completely exhausted. Oh, yes. And then damage hit the brain damage. Basham hit the diving headbutt, got the pin. Maybe star in three-quarter if I'm being a nice guy. Yeah. This was... Not the greatest showcase for the returning uh, Bashams, yeah. but... God bless uh, these men. I'm, I'm a big fan of both of them. <laughs> I know I said it earlier in the show, but the crowd just does not give a shit about them. No. And then we had uh, Kip going after Christy. The bad guys cut him off, and Lance Hoyt made the save. And Tanae just nonchalantly says, I guess his plane made it. I guess so. It does happen to land just in time for him to run out right at the end of this match. Fuck. Just save the day. And and, and and again, we don't know why Lance Hoyt is suddenly friends with the James Gang. Well, he's part of VKM. He sort of has been for the wa- a he while. Just, he's been walking around with them. No reason. Yeah, he's, he's, he's their posse. He's their homie. He, he's, he's their X-Pac. He grabs the... Uh, he carries their bags. He grabs the chick and... Uh, he has been grabbing the chick, that's right. Sure. Hold, holds on to the ass. <laughs> he grabs the cops of feel. So anyway. Then we had uh, Chris Harris and James Storm in a Texas death match. This was a hell of a little match. They redeemed themselves for last month. Amen. I think they, if they had a negative four-star match, they they added eight stars to it. <laughs> Perhaps eight and a quarter. This was great. They they brawled all over the place. They beat the shit out of each other. It was double juice. James Storm was bleeding so much that at one point he got put through a table, and he was face down. And as he lifted his head up, there was a puddle of blood. 
This is not like, I'm not exaggerating here when I say a puddle. This was a puddle of blood. <laughs> Very good. This was a bunch of blood that had come out of his head that had formed a large puddle on the ground. Yeah. Like when you're a little kid and you walk to school and there's a big puddle and you jump in it to just spray water everywhere. Or when you were walking to school and the guy drove through the puddle to spray you with water. That's what this was. A puddle. A giant puddle of blood. Of blood. That I could have jumped in and sprayed blood everywhere. Yes. Gross. It was gross. I, I thought it was actually the even better example. There's a point where he went to get a table and he yanked it out and it had a big red stain on it. And I thought, what the hell? That table already got blood on it. Then I realized, no, he was bleeding so profusely and so quickly that everywhere he went, he was just leaving a trail of blood everywhere. Oh, yes. It, it, this, this was a one hell of a play job. This was a match where the, the term crimson mask, this was a crimson mask. If you look at a man's face, there was no pink. No. No tan. <laughs> no white. No white. Just shiny, deep red. He was completely, completely red, except for his eyeballs, his nostrils, and his mouth. Even his nostrils. At the end of this match, they got a close-up, and as he was bleeding, there was a bubble of blood coming out of his nose. Yes. That is gross. The place was going absolutely crazy. Gail Kim ran down at one point to take Jackie to the back, and the finish, very poetic. They both grabbed a beer bottle. And, of course, the whole feud started when James Storm hit Chris Harris with a beer bottle. This time, Chris Harris was quicker on the draw. That's exactly what I was going to say. He was quicker on the draw, and he hit him with the beer bottle first, and James Storm was killed, got the pin, stood up. The crowd did the big, long, standing ten count. He did not get to his feet, and this was awesome. This was great. This was something you don't, you don't often see in TNA, which is... You feel like you're watching two guys who want to kill each other. And they did. And the other key thing is, these fuckers, both of them, they sold their asses off. They acted all the time like, I am near death. This latest move has, in fact, put me in serious bodily harm, and I may pass away at any second. Yet I will now kick out, or yet I will now beat the 10 count. This was great stuff. Hardy thumbs up to both you guys. You, you have, in fact, redeemed yourselves for the bullshit you put us through last month. And then TNA just fucked you both. <laughs> By showing what a rinky-dink, low-class, dipshit, stupid promotion they actually are. They have this awesome fucking match. Just an awesome match. Four and a quarter, maybe four and a half stars if you really want to go that high. But the point is they have this awesome match. They bleed, violence, glass. And as soon as Chris Harris gets the win, as soon as the referee hits ten... They cut backstage immediately because, you see, Sting had an important promo to cut. Mm -hmm. Or maybe Kurt Angle. I don't even know. Doesn't matter. All I know is when they cut backstage, not only did they cut away from this great match, but they cut away and had no audio. So Sting is cutting a promo, and you can't hear him. So they finally get the audio turned on, and I didn't hear a goddamn word he said because all I could hear in the background was the crowd still screaming, still excited, chanting, thank you reveling in the moment, the great moment that we had just seen, and TNA could not have given a fuck less. It was this Sting promo. Let me tell you, they had to get this Sting promo in for the main event because without it, God knows, it would have only been a two-and-a-half-star match instead of two-and-three-quarters at the end. This was so... This filled me with intense anger. And it should have. And it, it goes back to how they, they're clueless. They, they have no idea... How to make anything special, and, the, and these guys made it special, special on their own, and then when something special falls in their laps, they have no idea how to keep it. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I can think of one special moment in the history of TNA. If you ask me name one special moment in the history of this company, the only thing that I would remember is that cage walk Hurricane Rana. That, okay, yeah. They, they, I'm, they I'm, I'm sure everybody it. could make a list, and I'd go, yeah, that was pretty cool, yeah, that was pretty cool. But the one memory I have of this company, if it died today, and ten years from now I'd look back and and, uh, and say, you know, what were the iconic moments in the history of TNA? I would remember the cage watch at Frankensteiner. And you know what's funny about that? I never even saw that pay-per-view. Really? I never saw that pay-per-view. I don't know where I was or what I was doing, but that was one of the only TNA shows that I've never seen. I never saw that. And they have replayed it so many times... And made it into such a big deal 
that it has become one of the great moments in the history of TNA. And the reason nothing else does is because of things like this. Mm-hmm. Cutting away at the end of a great match like this while everybody's going nuts and giving both guys a standing ovation, and meanwhile we're just watching Sting talking to Jeremy Borash, that's why nothing on Impact ever has any impact. Exactly. You, you forget about it as soon as it's over because they do too. And you think about it, I, WWE have seen the opposite done so many times. A match is over... And and they they try to get a reaction from the crowd and it doesn't work. And, and, and or they just leave the guys on the screen like the they played the Hardy song all the way through two times. Yes. The last pay per view. Yes. Like, why? But you know, in the end, I remember that. Yes. I remember that vividly. I remember the standing ovations that Chris Benoit got. I can remember a million great things. The uh, the uh, the post. After uh, Benoit won the title, yep, yep, yep. and Eddie hit the ring, I mean they played that over and over, and they they kept they kept the TV on. It wasn't like here where Angle won the belt in the main event and they immediately cut away. I mean he lifted the belt up, but I don't even think he got his arm all the way straight and they cut away. He cut the, went to black. And you wonder why nobody gives a shit about anything that ever happens in this promotion. W- because w- TNA doesn't give anybody the opportunity to care. Yes. How could we possibly care? They don't give us any time to care. It, well, it seems like a deliberate uh, deliberate effort to make us forget. Yes. They don't want us to know about their company. This was just so utterly stupid. Then we had Alex Shelley, Tiger Mask 4, Senshi, and Jerry Lynn. It ended up being a, a pretty good match, probably two and three-quarter stars. They worked very hard, but the problem was they were following such a great match, and they were really following so many great matches that just another random X Division four-way was absolutely nothing special. Just a clusterfuck of four guys out there for literally absolutely no reason. And, and it, it, at the beginning, it was just a massive clusterfuck. And like you say, by the end, it was pretty good. And, and when, when Lynn rolled up uh, Shelly for the win, everyone kind of went crazy. So it wasn't bad. But it worked in the end. It worked in the end. But, yes, th- this, was, this was the worst match on the show, I think. I... No, are you kidding me? This was worse Oh, than... hey, wait, no. Jesus Christ. No, I, I take that back. I apologize. I was wrong. Thank you. So anyway, afterwards, Shelly and Saban double-teamed on Lynn, and out came Bob Backlund with a series of leg sweeps. We're not making this up. He ran wild. He hit the ring and laid them out, not with punches, not with kicks, not with shoulder tackles. Leg sweeps. Leg sweeps, indeed. That was wacky. Then we had the tag title match. By the way, all the titles were still the NWA titles tonight, so I don't know what the hell they're going to do, but... Team 3D, Steiner and Tomko, LAX for the NWA World Tag Titles. This was just weird. Steiner Steiner got dropped on his neck with a German and then gave Bubba an exploder on his shoulder. And from that point, I was like, God, this could break down at any moment. <laughs> he looked old. He looked tired. He looked very human. Bubba's fat, but he worked very hard. Of course, they got the heat on, on uh, Devon and ended up with the stupidest spot I've ever seen. And... What they were going to do was LAX was going to throw Devon into the ropes, and Devon was going to do a roll through a double clothesline and do the diving hot tag. Unfortunately, it's not a square ring. It's a six-sided ring. So in order for Devon to hit the ropes, roll through, and be in position to dive, they fucking took him to his own corner to start the whip. That's true. So Bubba is standing there on the apron in his corner, LAX pushes Devon into the corner, and Devon is, he, I'm sure at some point he actually touched his own partner, Bubba Ray. And Bubba had to extend both hands around Devon's head like some sort of illusion and act like somehow he could not touch the man that he was touching. That he was, he had to not tag the guy that he was trying to tag, yes. It, it was like the reverse battle royal when nobody was paying attention and guys had to pretend like they couldn't get into the ring yes. with nobody holding them back. It was so absurd, all to set up a hot tag. <laughs> and it's not like they couldn't... He, he, he had to pretend that he couldn't tag so that he could get the hot tag. Yes. <laughs> when, when this happens, there's no drama for the hot tag. That's <laughs> true. Just tag. Well, just it, tag. It killed everything. Oh. And it's not as if... He could have just done it from a different corner, done a somersault, turned, and then dove for the tag. No, no. We have taken to his own corner. Own corner. That was absurd. So, anyway, broke down into a six-way or whatever, and Hernandez wiped out Devon as Devon was going for the tables. And then, finally, Steiner and Tomko argued with each other. 
Not really sure why, just because no one likes each other uh, in TNA. And finally, Tomko accidentally booted Steiner. Dudley hit the 3D, got the pin. Probably a three-star match, if I'm being generous. But, uh, yeah, it, it was... Uh, it was, I guess, it was a match. It was, it was, it was. It, this was also RFD cluster fuckery. The, the spoiled hot tag did not ruin a classic or anything. The, the other great part of the match was where Steiner uh, did the elbow drop and into the push-ups, and Bubba Ray jumped in the ring and decided to mock him by doing push-ups of his own. There was a flaw in Bubba Ray's plan. He's fat. He yes. had great difficulty with these push-ups. <laughs> this didn't work. Yeah. Then Steiner and Tom go out a huge brawl, and who should run down to make the save but Brother Rick? Rick Steiner. Weren't we all just waiting for that? Or he was trying to sell a house. I'm not positive what he was doing, but the idea is, obviously, Dudley's and the Steiners for the tag team titles. That should sell no buys. It would have been cool in 2001. Sure, yeah. Unfortunately, it's 2007. Yeah, and, uh Steiner is, in fact, a realtor now. Then we had an interview with Angle where he called Sting a biatch. I don't even think I did justice to how poorly he did this. A biatch, he may have said. Biatch? This was bad. <laughs> and he was in the nuclear plant. Yes. Which, as he pointed out, was Sting's set. Sting has a set. They spent money on Sting's interview area. Samoa Joe and AJ Styles. Yes, there were nine matches on the show, everybody. They had their usual good match, probably three and a quarter. I guess they... It, it seemed like they were holding back because they were not the main event. And I guess they didn't want to, uh, I don't know what the deal was, but, I mean, everything they did was good. There was certainly nothing wrong with it. Just sort of not the classic, it was not a classic Joe AJ match, but it was still very good. I, I've seen them before be the semi-main event and still put on their best show. So I, I think it's more just that for these two guys, it works best when Joe's the heel. Because Joe's a big, scary guy and a phenomenal bully, and AJ is a fantastic baby face. And not that they're bad the other way around, but it, it just... It almost always works better when the significantly larger man is, in fact, the heel. Except in the case of me and you. That, that was an exception. Anyway, this is an exception to many rules. <laughs> you, in fact, are the rules of gravity. <laughs> the rules of physics. So, anyway, they had this match, and, and uh, AJ, AJ did the old I hurt my shoulder trick, which was, of course, a trick. And then later, Joe did the I hurt my knee trick. And he fooled AJ and then put him in the, the uh, choke and then suplexed him out of the choke onto his head and pinned him. Probably about three and a quarter stars. I don't know what they're going to do with it. They said Jim Cornette was watching. I don't know what that means. Uh, Joe did make the I, I want Vince Verheide was watching, too. That doesn't mean a whole hell of a lot. That's true. Joe did make the yeah. I want a title belt signal with his hands around his waist. and They, just told, they had the basic story of, of AJ tried to... To pull a trap, but Joe was too smart and used his own trap against him and then suplexed him onto his head, which the camera missed, by the way. Yes. <laughs> More classic TNA direction. Way to go, guys. And there was never a replay. And But, yes, again, good match. Yes, good match. So then we had the main event, which was Christian, Sting, Angle, NWA title. Still the NWA belt, as noted. Started exactly the same as the other three-way from earlier on. Angle did this crazy spear early. He ran probably faster than he has since he started training for the Olympics. Hit the post. That kept him out of action for a while. Then he gave Sting the Olympic slam on the ramp, which kept him out of action for a while. Angle hit eight Germans on Christian. Sting broke it, uh, broke it up. A bunch of uh, wacky spots of that nature. Stacked up superplex spot. I was actually very happy with the crowd tonight because Sting went to suplex Christian and then superplex him. And then Angle came up behind Sting for a German, and so they did the big stacked-up spot, and the fans chanted, that was awesome. Yes. Not this is awesome. That was awesome. Which I am fine with, because that was awesome. That was, in fact, awesome. But this was not awesome. This was merely pretty good. So they had the match, and the ref took a bump. Shocking, I right know. Sting hit the death drop. Christian pulled the ref out of the ring, and that was the bump, and... Remember when that used to be like a DQ? There was a time when you were not allowed to put your hands on the referee. I forgot what the match was. I think it was like the Heart Foundation versus Demolition or something like that. This was years back. Oh, clearly. And I was watching this match, and I was all into it, and, and somebody went for a pin, and somebody else pulled the ref out of the ring, and the ref rang the bell, and I was just heartbroken. Like, what the fuck? God damn it! 
Now you just pull the ref out of the ring, and that's like part of the match. That's at, part of the strategy. At, at, at least this time it was a guy in the match who pulled him out. Sure. Christian pulled him out, which in TNA in 2007, that seems legal. If, uh, usually it's a manager pulling him out or a tag team partner or, or a fan or a concession seller, just some guy who's there. That's what I just said. It's legal to pull a ref out of the ring now. Yeah. It's like the and, – and like in the X Division matches, it's like if a man's making a cover – and you do a dive, and your your pinky finger touches the other man's toe, that counts as breaking up the pin. Yes. You don't actually have to get the guy off the other guy's no. shoulders or anything like that. Oh, no. You just have to make a dive and, and touch somebody in some way, and the ref stops counting. I don't know why, but those are apparently the rules of TNA. And if you're Jeff Jarrett, you can kick a man right in the nuts as hard as you can, and it won't be a DQ. So anyway, they uh, Angle did a double ankle lock, and they rolled him outside, and... Here was the finish. Sting schoolboyed Christian and was covering him. Angle came up behind and put Sting, who was covering Christian, in the ankle lock. One ref counted a pin, and the other ref ruled the match over when Sting tapped. So Angle, who had Sting in the ankle lock, who had just pinned Christian while tapping, was determined the winner. Everything was going fine, and as soon as they got in this clusterfuck position, the crowd just died. Like, what the fuck is going on? They saw the finish, Angle got the belt, they immediately cut away, and that was the end of the show. What a shitty ending to an otherwise great pay-per-view. No one in TNA, particularly in the main events, but no one in TNA can ever just win a match. No. There has to be some fuck-up. Eight referees come in. There's simultaneous submissions or a simultaneous pin or simultaneous pin and submission. There, there, there's just no one ever wins, which is part of what made Chris Harris's whenever well, the storm everybody so on the show won except in the main event. Oh, it's the main event I remember. Yes. But, yes, it, it's just... It, and, again, why would anyone want to see these shows? They never get an ending. Why would anyone need to... To see these, who cares what they do on Impact? Like, who cares? Sting's going to say, I pinned him, I should be the champ. Angle's going to say, I made you submit, I should be the champ. Christian's going to say, It should be a draw. It should be a draw, the champ retains, and we'll all just be hating each other again. Who fucking cares? Not I. I don't understand. But anyway. You might want to get the replay of this one. This was a, there was fine wrestling action on the show. It was only twenty nine ninety five, and uh, this was a, this was a pretty damn good show. Not as good as Backlash. Backlash was uh, yeah. an excellent show, but this was pretty damn great. So you might want to check that one out. And uh, that's pretty much it for the recap. Not much more to say about the show except uh, tune into Impact. Grandpa Nash is grounding somebody, and three grown men are going to cry like little girls. What more could you ask for in your pro wrestling? I can't think of anything. All right, TNA. Jesus. Angle came out with a new TNA title belt, said he'd finally achieved his goal, top wrestler in the business, as the TNA champion, which just comedy right there. The TNA champion. Fans were chanting we want Christian. He came out and said the TNA rule book yes stated that in the case of an indecisive finish the champion retain Don West did not know that. Don said I didn't know that. I don't know which is funnier. A TNA champion you're the champion of TNA. I like better he came out and his afterwards were, this belt is the most important belt in wrestling. Like, like he couldn't even remember what it was called. The TNA, cha- or the fact that there's a TNA rule book. That, that I've got to get my hands on. <laughs> it must be 80,000 pages long. Yeah. So, uh, Cornette came out and... Sting was also there. Sting came out, who cares. Anyway, Cornette came out and basically said, basically what we said was going to happen. All three men had a claim... He was stripping them of the belt, and Cornette said he needed a a franchise ball player. Ball! He added the ball. 
Who wants a franchise ball player in TNA as the champion? Go get the demon. I thought of the demon. I thought of, uh, was David Eckstein a baseball guy or was David he a NASCAR was a baseball guy. guy? Okay, I get him confused, but apparently Cornette wants a ball player as the next champion, so there's going to be a, a wacky tournament. And five qualifying matches over the next five weeks. Winners go to the Slammiversary pay-per-view to compete in a King of the Mountain match. And may the best man win, he said. I'll bet the best man will win. So let's review the history of the TNA Championship. It was awarded to Kurt Angle because he was stripped of the NWA title. And then, then it was immediately stripped of him. Yeah. And then we put up for the line in a match with five guys where no one has to get pinned. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> this could not be any more perfect. No. That's the TNA title. Yeah, that is the TNA world title. If, they, if the gimmick of this company becomes that no one ever actually pins someone to win the belt, that would be awesome. I can't even fathom if somebody said, Brian, we want to make you the TNA champion. <laughs> Can you go into Orlando? You want to use it for three, give you a three-month run as the TNA champ. We want you to be the champion of total nonstop action. What a thing to put on your resume. Can you imagine? If, if Bret Hart wasn't retired, he'd have one more buckle to add to his trophy case. The TNA champion. Save it and Shelley versus Jerry Lynn and Tiger Mask. Save it and Shelley are great. Alex Shelley actually pinned the Tiger Mask. That surprised me. And that was fine. And then uh, Lynn went after both guys. They cut him off. Bob Backlund made the save. They <laughs> cut him off. And then Black Machismo cleared the ring. And that was that. That was fine. Sadly, Bob Backlund did not run wild with, with uh, leg sweeps this week. No, he ran wild with wackiness. <laughs> yes. Jim Mitchell is looking for a replacement for Abyss. I cannot wait to see who the next giant man will be. Jim Mitchell is awesome, though. This, that is true. This promo was great. And we had Kevin Nash giving a stern lecture to young Sanjay Dutt. Kevin Nash, last Sunday night at Sacrifice, Sanjay Dutt kicked you in the back from behind when you weren't expecting it. What's going on? I'll put it this way. I didn't come to talk today. I came to give that boy a receipt. Hey, 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 uh, I know you've been looking for me. Can, can, can we talk? Uh, can you kick me harder? Kev, uh, let's not dwell on the past. I mean, what I did was wrong, and I'm here to say I'm sorry. I apologize for it. I, I know. My emotions got the best of me. The adrenaline was pumping in my blood, and it was a big title match, and I'm sorry. You, you've done so much for me in my career, and you know, I didn't even mind that I was that bad. It, it was awesome. And you've been like a father to me. You really have. And I shouldn't have done what I did, but I'm sorry. Next time, I won't be so forgiving. Sanjay apologized for what happened in the pay-per-view. His emotions had got the best of him. Nash said, uh, listen, I will forgive you, but next time it will not be so forgiving. The law has been laid down. He's not been grounded yet. That's right. One more time, though, the car keys get taken away. Grandpa has taken away the TV privileges, but that's all. Daniels versus Raven. <laughs> Angel Christopher Daniels, even though you have not had much to say over the last six months, maybe you could explain this. Last Sunday night at Sacrifice, Rhino busted you wide open. It was days later you requested an open invitation first blood match. Please explain the logic in this. Logic? There is no logic. There are actions and there are consequences. Sting. Sting understands consequence, even if he won't admit it. <laughs> Sting, what does this have to do with Sting? Uh, okay. <laughs> so Chris Daniels, earlier in the show, in a promo, a very short promo, mentioned that he had thrown out an open challenge first blood match. He wanted to have a first blood match. He didn't care who it was with. It was a very quick promo, so when Brian was typing, he missed it entirely. Mm. So... Raven came out, and Brian had no idea whether they having a first blood match, and I don't blame you. <laughs> there was no, there was no build for this. There was, I guess, it was ten minutes build. There was no explanation for it. There was no graphic for it. The only way to tell it was first blood is if you were listening to the commentary. And why would you do that? <laughs> so yes, Raven wrestled instead of Serotonin with Raven and Daniels. They did a million wacky weapon spots, including <laughs> Raven not being stupid, tried to draw blood by stabbing him with a screwdriver. Raven, uh. Looks like Buddy Rose now. Yes. He's the Raven of 2007 looks like the Buddy Rose of 2007. Very heavy. And uh, anyway. That's actually an improvement because I believe last year you said he looked like Buddy Rose's corpse. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Who could have possibly said that? Not me. It's horrible. Anyway. I don't even remember what happened. Raven there lost. There was blood involved. Ra Raven lost and then they were going to cane him but... 
He's too smart to have it booked that way. <laughs> they stopped him, and then Kaz ran off, and, and who cares? <laughs> you go. That's the correct answer. You know, this might make sense if we all watched fucking Explosion. Earth to TNA, we don't. <laughs> we don't know what the fuck's going on, nor should we care if we don't know what's going on. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> you know what I don't get? <laughs> TNA. <laughs> like, I watched the show... And stuff that I'm supposed to understand, I don't. And right. then they add shit that I'm not supposed to understand. Why would you do that? <laughs> Why would you have, like, a mystery? I don't know. Well, when, when you have a mystery, at the end of the mystery, it's supposed to be solved. I have a feeling this mystery will never be solved with serotonin. Oh, they'll no. just disappear. No. no. Raven will beat them with Kane once in a while, and then one day they'll just break up. Yeah. When I say break up, I mean they'll just come out separately with new new look. So, my most hated storyline continued. Eric Young came out wearing a Don't Fire Eric shirt. I, anyway, Robert Roode came out and said, okay, I still own you. Listen, you're already getting ahead of this. This this is a segment where I gave up on this angle forever. So, I'll explain briefly, and then I will never talk about this again. Eric came out with the fans celebrating happy in a great mood. And I thought, why? Your guy lost the pay-per-view, so you can't possibly have won anything. Perhaps he's celebrating the fact that you put Tracy in the figure four. Great. So he came out. He's talking about freedom. I am free now. And the announcers are like, yay, you're free. And Bobby Roode comes out and says, you're not free. And the announcers say, oh, he's not free. And that was where I, I, I literally and figuratively, I threw my hands in the air. I'm never going to talk about this angle again. <laughs> if you have anything to say, go ahead. Well... He said if Cornette was going to sue him, he'd have done it a long time ago. He wasn't going to fire Eric. He told him to get a good attorney because he was going to sue Eric. Eric mocked him. Rude punched him. And then Stomper distracted Rude, allowing Young to clear the ring. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Wasn't that great? That's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> I hate this show. <laughs> this show sucks. I just... I don't know. Angle and Rhino in a qualifying match. They worked very hard. Yeah. They worked so hard that TNA only cut three minutes out of the middle <laughs> of it with a commercial. So we had two minutes of good action, a commercial, and then a comeback. They did the same finish Angle and Edge did for Backlash in, like, 2002. I think that's the pay-per-view. Anyway, it was the one before the hair match, and it fucking was so awesome. Rhino went for the gore. Angle kicked him and then hit the angle slam for the clean pin. Find that match, everybody. Edge and Angle at, like, Backlash or something like that. 2002. It was it was a while back, but god damn it was good. I could watch it a million times, and it never gets not good. So, anyway, then Letitia interviewed Cornette. And it was so great also because Edge was the baby face, <laughs> and Angle was the heel, and, like, Angle just beat him totally fucking clean. And it was so great. You're happy now. It was so awesome. I mean, that's great wrestling. Yes, the, 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 this the, stuff brings me joy, not this shit that i got to watch on TNA now. This was great. They had this match. <laughs> Let me explain this. Angle and Edge had this match. Edge is a baby face. Angle's a heel. Angle just... Well, this was when he was at his peak. Yes. You know, like four years into the business, less. Three years into the business. Just unbelievable. So they do this match, and, and Edge, all of a sudden in the middle of the match, is a drop kick off the top rope. A drop kick off the top rope. The fans count along. They thought this was going to be the finish. There had been no comeback. There had been no build. They just saw this drop kick, and they decided Edge won. But he didn't. And they were fucking into this match from every moment after that. And I was like... Kurt Angle, you're awesome. I don't know how you did this. I have no earthly idea, but goddamn, you're awesome. And Edge, thumbs up to you two. This actually might have been, I don't know if this was right before or after Edge got his neck surgery, but I know when he came back from neck surgery, he was horrible for a long time. And then all of a sudden he became great again. But anyway, he was really good in this match. And, and this was the match where Angle first busted out the spot where he took the chair and he tried to get a chair shot, but it bounced off the ropes and hit him in the head. And he hits himself in the head, and he stumbles back, and Edge hits the execution, and the fucking place goes crazy, and Angle kicks out. And I was jumping up and down, and then uh, Edge goes for the gore, and Angle kicked him in the face and gave him the Olympic slam, clean as a sheet, one, two, three. I'm wet. And you just got to listen to Jerry Lawler. He's, he's, he's uh, beside himself with joy at some of this matches. This was so fucking great. 
And let's review this. Let's review the booking. You have Kurt Angle, who I believe at that time was a former world champion, and you have Edge, who at that time was pretty much a tag team guy, trying to make out as a big breakout single star. And the fans liked him. They wanted him to be a great, big, great, big breakout single star. So they had this match with the young up-and-comer against the established guy. They want the young guy to win. And at the end, damn it, he gets beat. What happens now? I want another match. And I, they did it at the next show. Yep, they did it at the next show. It was so great. That, that, that is the booking. You beat me. I want, to try, I want another try. It, it, it was so awesome because the key to it was Angle pinned him clean because he was better. Right. That's the whole point that TNA does not understand. They're so afraid of anybody getting beaten. Everybody's got to be undefeated. Everybody's got to be at a certain level. Nobody can do a job, this and that. The whole point is, when you have a guy that's better, it's a quest. (laughs) Edge's quest was to beat Kurt Angle, because Kurt Angle kept beating him. Kurt Angle kept being a better wrestler. And so Edge had to fight and try and try and try, and then finally he did beat him. And all of a sudden he was great. That was all it took. God damn, that was so great. What's happened? <laughs> Actually, I shouldn't say that because, you know, I, I've... The I've first quarter this year in one company was great. I've, I've seen plenty of awesome wrestling in WWE, and I saw plenty of awesome wrestling in Ring of Honor this past year, and... and uh, we also watched TNA. I actually saw uh, some great wrestling at the last fucking TNA pay-per-view. Then I watch Impact, and I don't know what the hell's going on. But at least fucking Angle beat Rhino clean, so I can't complain too much. So Angle goes on in this tournament... And then uh, they announced next week at Sting and Samoa Joe in a qualifying match. And then Steiner stormed in and demanded a match with Team 3D. Now, this is a dream match, I guess, if you want to classify it as such. Sure. The Dudleys versus the Steiners. And uh, what do they say? Next week, free on TV. And Cornette added, guaranteed. Yeah. So either Cornette lies or TNA is stupid. And if I had to guess, if I had, <laughs> had to go out on a limb... I guess TNA's stupid. The funniest thing was when Cornette said it, his exact words were, I smell money. I smell money, he said, <laughs> on this free show. So, yes, Spiners versus Team 3D for the first time ever, for free. Sting versus Samoa Joe for the first time ever. And he smells money. For free. Yeah. I don't know how he smells money. I don't know what the deal is, but... Maybe he got a cheap flight home. He's smelling the money, smelling the money he saved. <laughs> ah, fly, but... I didn't even get the joke. It doesn't matter. It wasn't funny. All right, TNA. They hyped up Sting and Joe in the main event, which will be free. Sure, and that always that, been... that defines the show. We're done, everybody. <laughs> We're finished tonight. Free. Sting and Joe. Yeah, I want to say something. I'm not gonna mention any names. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go over the entire the entire 77 pages that these various these various. It's one argument basically that's now reached about 74 different threads with a certain individual who just has utterly no clue. But it's just a a, a suggestion to everybody. They say that a little knowledge is a dangerous thing. If you went to college to study business. If if you think you understand business in in the real world, please, please fucking do me a favor and don't try to apply any of that knowledge to the business of professional wrestling. Don't. Every money mark I've ever seen has been a guy who thinks he understands business and thus thinks that he can be a success in the fucking wrestling world. Vince McMahon has figured it out. TNA um, did not. Ted Turner did not. Vince McMahon wiped out all the territories. Vince McMahon is the one guy left standing. Okay? I, I see it all the time, people trying to get into this business because they think they understand how to promote wrestling. You don't! To stop trying to apply what you've learned in the actual business world to pro wrestling, because it's not the same. In no way is it the same. Fucking TNA's been trying to apply the knowledge that they've they've uh, that uh, the Carters have gained. Fucking uh, running Panda Energy, a hell of a lot of good that's fucking done TNA. Now to be fair, I suck before they got there. 
Fuck, it's, it's, uh, did, they didn't improve it any. No, no, they're not. Real business people coming in. They understand charts. They went to college. They, they, they've read books. They, they, they've studied, uh, studied, uh, um, statistics and shit like that. None of that matters. Pro wrestling is a completely different business than anything else in the entire world. And, uh, I just want to throw that out there. You feel better? God. Just uh, ridiculous. Brian, I, I, uh, I'm studying business right now, and let me tell you, let me tell you about, uh, about how to, how to sell to, uh, people. Great! Well, start a fucking wrestling company then. Start a wrestling company and show me how this is done. I've seen a hundred guys start wrestling companies, and, uh, they all fail. They all fail. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I, I, uh, I, I ran, I run an energy company. Fuck! I can do this. Yeah, hell of a job you've done. All right. <clears throat> so, yeah, Sting versus Joe for free. Sting versus Joe for free. Why would you do that? Uh, Because you have no clue? <laughs> because you don't actually want to make money at any point? Team 3D came out, and, and th- this was an awesome segment, the one awesome segment on the show. Scott, before you say a word, I just want to let you know that on my behalf, behalf of me and my brother, Devon, it's an absolute pleasure to be standing in the ring with one of the greatest tag teams of all time. Anyone who cares as much about wrestling history as Team 3D is going to have the utmost in respect for the accomplishments of the Steiners. If it wasn't for you and your brother Rick, guys like me and Devon would never be here today. The Steiners paid the path. They laid the groundwork for Team 3D. I'd like everybody in the Impact Zone to stand up and give the Steiner brothers the standing ovation that they properly deserve. Wow, what a great moment this is to see the respect whoa, 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 from whoa, Team whoa, 3D. Whoa. This is a bad I don't need you. I don't need any of these rednecks up here to tell me and my brother how great we were. I know how great we were. The question is we want to talk about how great you were. We want to talk about your legacy. Or lack thereof. Wow. Doesn't sound like the respect is mutual from the side. You're your multi-time WWE champion, but I want you to name one tag team, just one, that these people out here will even recognize. I tell you, the one big problem I got is you say you guys were WCW World Tag Team Champions. What? See, I got a big problem with that because, see, we were the first WCW World Tag Team Champions. We spent most of our career in WCW. And not one time did I even say your name on the roster. Matter of fact, not one time did I even see you step in the ring. But the biggest joke of them all, and when you call yourself ECW World Tag Team Champions. See, that's the difference between you and us. See, when we were World Tag Team Champions, we actually traveled the world, defended our belts. We went to the Tokyo Dome in front of 69,000 people. We went to Japan and won the IWGP World Tag Team titles. We went to North Korea in front of 170,000 people. Three nights in a row and defending our titles. You jokers never left a bingo hall. Oh, they don't deserve that. See, I don't have a problem with you fat Call yourself ECW City Champs, ECW State Champs, or ECW Bingo Hall Champs. But one thing's for damn certain, there is no world champion in ECW. I know it, and you should know it by the paychecks you got. Oh, is that ever stiff? So when it comes down to you want legacy, I'll give you legacy. So you might have won a bunch of titles, but you beat nobody. Want to listen to our Tell them who we beat, Ricky. Let me see. No Warriors. No Horsemen. What Samoan SWAT 
They said they'd heard the Steiners wanted a piece of them. And uh, last week, I believe they the Steiners had asked for a match, and Cornette guaranteed it. Well, they didn't get it. I could have sworn they were going to have a match this week. Yeah, well, he lied. He smelled money, he said, remember? Yeah. yeah. Frankly, it's just as well. I'd rather have them lie to me than have, actually, have them actually do the match. So, um, Steiners and, and Team 3D. and Rick and Scott said uh, they came out and... and where am I here? <laughs> the Steiners came out. First, Team 3D kissed their ass a lot. Yes. It's an honor to be in the ring with the Steiners. That's right. We're so happy to be here with you. We, so we then Scott said, done. shut the fuck up. Let me explain this fat ass. We don't need you to tell uh, us how uh, great we are. Bubba said, uh, you, you claim you can, you're a multi-time WWE champion, but name one team you have beat that anyone in the audience would give a rat's ass about. He said they called themselves WCW champions, whereas they, the Steiners, were the first WCW champions, and he didn't ever remember seeing their names on the roster, bearing the WWE version of WCW, which is perfectly valid. The crowd was now chanting, 3D sucks. <laughs> yes. So uh, Steiner said he wanted to vomit when he heard themselves calling themselves the ECW champions. He said they went to New Japan and won the IWGP titles. They fought in the Tokyo Dome before 69,000 in North Korea before 170,000. Fought all over the world. Team 3D had never left the bingo hall. They should call themselves the ECW city or state champions, but the world champions was a joke. He said Team 3D had never beaten anyone. Rick then produced a... A, he produced uh, the list. A printout, a computer printout on a, uh, a daisy wheel printer. Where they found this, I don't know. Of all the teams that they had beaten, from the uh, Four Horsemen to the Midnight Express of the Outsiders to Money, Inc. <laughs> yes. And uh, Team 3D just got owned. And, oh, yes. And Bubba was like, listen, we're old school wrestlers just like you guys. And I was like, fuck off. Yes. And he goes, we're not like those young guys in the back who have no respect. And I thought, fuck off. And apparently everyone else in the crowd thought, fuck off as well. And Scott basically said, flat out, your legacy doesn't mean shit. And uh, Bubba walked off, and, and Devon got the mic, and, and they basically set up the tag match at the Slamversary pay-per-view. And this ruled. This, in fact, ruled. It. The only nit to pick, and I guess it works, but Team 3D and Bubba in particular came the off. The only like, nit to pick? Yeah, yeah, it's the same. Just go with it. Team 3D, Bubba in particular, came off like the biggest whining pussy in the entire world. Why don't you guys like us? We've got a legacy, too. And, of course, the, of course the fans turned on him. It was pathetic. And it, But it doesn't matter, because the point of this was, this is two teams saying... They come out with fake belts. <laughs> yes. Those are heels. Well, <laughs> that, yeah, that's true, too. But uh, the point is, these two teams got into the space, and by the end of, the, the end of it, all it was was, we don't like you, we think, you're gonna, we think we're better than you, and we're going to prove it at the pay-per-view. Yes. That's it. And there is someone on the board saying, we're tired of hearing about business. We don't care. We're wrestling fans. You know what? Nine times out of ten, or maybe more, what's good for business is, in fact, fun to watch. <laughs> Perhaps it's a foreign concept, but things that are fun to watch usually make money. Yeah. People want to take part in this because it's fun. 
Yes. So, yes, this was a great segment. Kip James got a promo with Lance Hoyt. Told Lance to step up tonight and get revenge on Christy, who had killed BG James, her men. And Hoyt said, unlike BG and Kip, he was not afraid to hit a girl. Yes. Yay. That's nice. He also said that TNA had never given him a chance. And I thought, didn't they put you with the baseball guys? They've given him a number of chances, and no one cares. Kip and Hoyt versus Basham in the Damager. Heat on Kip. Christy interfered, so Hoyt dragged her backstage, which meant his partner was all alone. So Kip was double teamed and pinned. Sure. What a genius that Lance Hoyt was. <laughs> that made him look like a complete friggin' moron. What an idiot. It gets better. So the next match, actually we'll get to that in a minute. Joe cut a promo and uh, talked about how he was going to beat Sting tonight and, and this and that, and it was good. They uh, Robert Roode cut a promo saying he wanted to be in the King of the Mountain match and was going to be the next TNA champion. And then he started threatening Eric Young, saying he had one week to answer his attorney's letter, otherwise things were going to get ugly, he was going to take his career, every penny he'd ever learn, earned, and can we just move on and put Robert Roode in the title picture? I have. Why does this have to drag on? I am boycotting the Eric Young Bobby Roode program. <laughs> Why? I will speak no more Explain of it. Explain this to me. I have wasted enough breath. Did you even understand it? I went, Honestly, I went, as soon as he started talking, I heard, I heard the words Eric Young... I tuned out. I don't even know what he said. Christian versus or Christian and Tomko versus LAX. They uh, they did a match. Hernandez got the hot tag, and Conan shoved Hector, who is just sitting in the front row for some reason. Like he keeps buying tickets to the show. I guess they need the money. So after Conan shoved Hector, Homicide went out. So Homicide was away from his partner, who was double-teamed and pinned. Did we not just see that finish in the previous match? That does sound familiar. How can there not be... How can you have a show with things like that happening? And it's only an hour. How can you have a one-hour show with, like, four matches and two in a row have the same finish? I, 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 I don't understand. I don't know either. And both times they made their guy look stupid. think that they spend a week writing each show. <laughs> That's true. They have seven days. More. More than that. Because they, they, they only tape every, every like, three weeks. So they've got three weeks to write these, uh, these shows. Three weeks to write three shows. And nobody sits and goes, hey, we did the same finish in two straight matches. Yes, we did the Maybe same... we should do something else. No, we have to have Homicide get in Hector's face. That's important for Christ knows what reason. Oh, the Borash interviewed Angle about Joe and Sting. He, uh, uh, Angle, it was Angle. So Angle flat out suggested he was going to run in during the main event. That is apparently a selling point. Yes, tune in to see Kurt Angle do a run-in. Yeah, okay, great. That's what I need. So Joe versus Sting, this is supposed to be a dream match. Boy, did it not feel like it. <laughs> they got two minutes, and then Daniels came out, and then we had a commercial. And then when they came back, Sting was making a, a comeback, and Daniels jumped up on the apron... And Sting shoved him off, which led to Daniels hitting him in the back with a bat, behind the ref's back for the pin. And then Joe covered him. Sting kicked out immediately after the pin, actually. So Joe pinned him, but Sting still had to get his shoulder up after the three count. And did Angle even come out? No. So he teased a run-in and didn't deliver. Correct. <laughs> TNA, everybody. <laughs> You know, There's a million things to bitch about here. Let me, let me bitch about something else. All right. All right. Joe versus Sting for free on TV. Okay? Dumb. But let's just say it's not dumb. Let's say that, that, uh, let's say that, that it's just a good idea. Let's pretend for a second. All right? So you've decided you're going to give Joe versus Sting a dream match away for free on television. The first ever meeting for free on television. With one week's bill. You've made that decision. Fine. Do you really provide what they provided as a dream match? We've said this so many times. If you're one of the 1.2 million people that have never bought a pay-per-view, why would you ever watch this show to buy a pay-per-view? Because there's never a long match. There's never a good match. It's always shitty angles or three-minute matches. Okay? So why would you think I should pay twenty nine ninety five to see three hours of this? Nobody could possibly say such a thing. So the question is, all right, 
Raw. Raw gives away a lot of long, good matches. You know, they're letting people know that if you buy a pay-per-view, you're going to get some quality in-ring action. That makes sense. So TNA has got an opportunity because they've made up their minds to give away this dream match for free. So they have this opportunity, and what do they provide? Two minutes, and then a run-in, and then a commercial, and then a finish with another run-in and a gimmick shot behind the referee's back. The most shitty, generic match you could possibly think of. It was every TNA main event every week. Everything about this was fucked up. Yeah. It was fucked up giving it away for free, and if that wasn't fucked up, what they delivered as a dream match was shit. There was nothing dream match about it. It was, in fact, I have a Fergie in my notes where I say, absolutely nothing special, just a backdrop for a wacky angle. Yes. I, 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 I it's nothing, they, they can't do anything right. No. And I, mean, fact, I, mean, well, I just, I don't understand. I, if you're going to give away a match for free... If you're going to give away a dream match, do the match. Start the fucking match at 20 minutes to the top of the hour. Give them 20 minutes so when you have your two commercial breaks, you still get a good 12 minutes of action and have a and try to give a pay-per-view caliber match so people know what they might fucking get if they buy the pay-per-view. This, I, 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 how? I what know. is this show supposed to accomplish? I have no idea. People get mad at us for asking this question, and meanwhile, they do the same 20,000 buys every month. And I hear every, every, the excuses are getting dumber. They, they get dumber and dumber and dumber. It, 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 we used to be fine when it was like, I'm trying to think of the old dumb excuses that we used to have, which was just like, uh, well, the, you know, the, not, they, they don't have enough viewers <laughs> or something like the, that. The, the, the ultimate dumb one, the, which they're still being to is we need another hour. Or we need another hour. That would be the, always be the ultimate stupid one. And we, I refer back to those 2001 OVW shows where they would build up to the... Fuck six. Ohio Valley. Look back at uh, the, the fucking Monday Night War started with t- two-hour shows. They did, in fact, have two one-hour shows. One-hour shows, Raw and Nitro. And uh, TNA somehow needs two hours. T- uh, WCW was on the top of the world, and they started to sh- uh, sink when they got three hours. That was, in fact, the first step. More was not, in fact, better. So, anyway, this show can uh, suck a cock, and I, I have, I, there's no hope for TNA. I'm sorry. They, they do the same bullshit over and over every single week, and they always do the same number of buys, and, and, uh, and years, uh, five-year anniversary is coming up, and, and uh, except for the people that are going to get mad listening to this right now, no one cares. <laughs> It's, it's Nobody fun. cares about TNA. So the rain, sorry. Five years of utter stagnation. I, I don't know what to tell you, but uh, that's it. 